Welcome everyone to the World Rapid Championships 2019. We have Magnus Carlsen coming to his board. He's facing Boris Savchenko, an excellent rapid and blitz player. Magnus asks his opponent to start the clock and off we go. It's 15 minutes plus 10 second increment per move. Magnus as always takes his time. He puts his player card, adjusts his pieces. He wants all of them in order before he begins. But he doesn't worry about the time that he's losing there. He's down to 14 minutes, 47 seconds. That was roughly around 25 seconds that he took for his first move. Opens up with 1d4. How is Savchenko going to respond to it? He goes the symmetrical way with d5. Magnus brings out his knight to f3. And Savchenko strikes the center with c5. Magnus puts his pawn on e3. Very solid. And now Boris takes here. Pawn takes and plays his knight to c6. In fact, you can reach this position from the exchange variation of Karo Khan. So we are now in Karo Khan territory. Bishop d5 played by Magnus. Pinning the knight here. And now the bishop comes and pins the knight on f3. Magnus hits the center with c4. And Boris, this, you know, gets his knight out on f6, develops his piece. Magnus also brings his knight out, putting more pressure in the center. If you take here, d5 can become quite a nuisance. So, Savchenko goes g6 and now pawn to h3. The move g6 is not a great move because now Magnus is fighting for an advantage. He takes on f3, plays the pawn up to a6, takes d5. Now, suddenly you can't take this pawn, so he takes the bishop, he takes here, takes takes the bishop then, and now queen takes b5. So the net result of all of these trades is that white is a clear pawn up. But Savchenko says that your pawn is hanging now, and if you play d5, I can go rook to a5. So Magnus goes in and chops off the pawn on b7. <coughs> now the knight on c6 is hanging both the players have played the opening and currently Savchenko chops off the pawn on d4. Magnus quickly castles because there was a threat of a fork on c2 and so does Boris Savchenko. White has two connected passers on the queen side. But are they strong enough? Rook comes to d1 attacking the knight and also pinning it against the queen. Knight e2 is possible because if you take here, the rook is hanging, but king f1 is completely fine there. So Savchenko plays queen b8 and he's telling Magnus, if you take here, I'm ready to play this in Benko style compensation with my two rooks and the bishop. So Magnus says, I'm not interested in this queen trade and in fact goes queen e4, keeps the queen and Savchenko hits it with f5. For Magnus, it's not going to be easy to stabilize this position, especially with so much activity here that black has. So he brings his queen back to d3. And now Savchenko can actually play his pawn up to e5 or get his rook to d8. Yes, he plays his pawn to e5. So look at the tragedy here. If you push the a pawn, then the b3 square gets weak. If you push the b3 pawn, then after e4, this entire diagonal gets weak. So for Magnus, this is a position where he has to put in a lot of effort to understand how to continue. He plays this little move, rook b1, which is very logical because when he pushes his pawn, the knight will no longer come to b3 and attack the rook. Queen comes into b4. Boris wants to bring his other rook to b8 perhaps. Magnus is thinking about developing his bishop. He puts it on e3 and attacks the knight. Maybe at some point he would like to take this knight off. Rook goes to d8, which is also a good move. And now Magnus hits the queen and asks it to move away. But that does weaken the b3 square and the black queen immediately parks itself on that square. Bishop takes d4. And now if you take with the pawn, then the knight simply goes back here. So rook takes and queen comes to b5 offering a trade of queens. Savchenko says, 
I'm okay with the trade, but I'm going to bring my rook into the position. So rook b8 played. Magnus does not trade queens. He goes queen c5, but that actually drops a lot of his advantage. Queen c4, Savchenko persists. He's like, let's trade the queens. Magnus this time chops it off. Rook takes, and now the knight jumps into d5. So the knight is well placed, but now the rook also swoops in. These two rooks are powerful. And rook d2, but can you play a pawn to e4? He does that. And now the bishop opens up completely on this diagonal. Magnus plays his pawn to g3, just hoping to actually stop these pawns from advancing. But the position is now equal. Although, king f7, king comes to g2, and now he plays his rook to d4. Well, although Magnus is a pawn up, his position is by no means winning here. Rook d1 is a good move, but now at the end he's going to lose his b2 pawn. So Savchenko takes, rook takes, and now you can just take this pawn with bishop takes b2, and it's equal. You can also take with the rook if needed. This is also completely fine position because that also seems equal. But right now Boris Savchenko is decide, deciding whether he should take the b2 pawn with his bishop or the rook. He takes it with the bishop. Magnus pushes his pawn. The position is roundabout equal now. Also look at the time. Magnus has 1 minute 14 seconds. Savchenko has 1 minute 8 seconds. He puts his rook behind the passed pawn. The king comes up to e6. There's a check. Well, you can actually take this and go into this rook endgame by bringing your king this side and putting it on a8. That should also be fine. But I think Boris Savchenko is keen that his bishop remains on the board. After all, it's a great piece. But Magnus keeps pushing his pawn. It goes to a5. Now Boris down to last 20 seconds. He goes bd4. That's a smart move because he wants to put his bishop on a7 where it will block the pawn. a6. Two squares away from queening. h4 play. Now these are the little moves that Magnus plays very quickly. And from here on, you will see why he is considered the greatest ever player in endgame phase that we have ever seen. The position is equal. You know, black has this bishop nicely placed here. The rook is also active. The king is also good. Pawn up to e3. That's a fine move. Trading more pawns cannot be bad for black. But now, what does Magnus Carlsen do? His knight doesn't have great squares. So he first gives a check. He first puts Savchenko under some pressure. He goes to c6, which is the correct move. Again gives a check. Asking questions is important when your opponent is low on time. Again, Boris plays the best move. Goes king d6. So he's hanging on here. Rook c8. Now, either the rook can go to a8 or it can go to h8 and put pressure here. Then the g6 pawn can also become weak. For now, Savchenko goes back and says, I'm going to keep control over the root of my pawn, which is the pawn on h7. Magnus plays his king to h3. Now, what's the logic of this move? Maybe he wants to push his pawn to h5 and activate his king this way. But right now, h5 is met with g5. So we are not really sure what Magnus is achieving by this. But... Savchenko now goes bishop e3. Maybe he feels it's the right time to chop this knight off. Magnus first gives a check. Again, this intermediate checks are so good. Because if you go king c7, maybe he goes now to h8 or a8. It's just a question. You know, maybe it's nothing spectacular. There you have it, king c7 played. Also knight d5 check is possible but it cannot be played because king takes d8 is hanging however after you move the rook away which magnus is intending to do knight d5 check is definitely a possibility he goes rook to d3 hits the bishop on e3 and now bishop chops off the knight pawn takes okay engine says this is equal because a pawn is going nowhere the king is controlling it and the black rook is controlling this pawn. How does Magnus Carlsen make any progress? Firstly, it's Boris Savchenko's move. He's a bit confused. How to continue? What is the way in which he should play? Maybe a good way to play is go rookie 4 
try to put pressure here and then shift the rook there. He goes king b6. Rook tries to stop the pawn. King blocks it. And now h5. Excellent play. Because if you take here, then the king comes up and wants to take this pawn or even enter here. Savchenko is a little confused about what is to be done. And these are the little questions that Magnus is asking combined with the clock ticking down. All of this is not easy. Rook e4, the best move in the position played. And you can see Magnus was unhappy with this move being played because now his pawn is hanging. If he brings his king here, then black takes and then pushes the pawn and then f4 is weak. If he moves his rook here, then he drops the a6 pawn. What is Magnus planning to do? He has a minute and 27 seconds, so there is some time to think here. But the position looks like dead equal now. He goes rook f3 and he tells Savchenko, take this pawn, you will be a pawn up. Your only problem is your king is too far away. And look at my king. It's just entering here. This is the power of a king. King b6, Savchenko does the right thing. He starts bringing his king in. King g5, white also brings his king into the attack. He is now threatening to take, take, king takes and then chop off the pawn on f5 when you would most likely be in a winning rook endgame. He goes rook e6 defending the pawn. This is a good idea. And now Magnus cuts the black king off. Look at this technique. Now the king is one, two, three, four files away from everything that's happening. So rook d6 player waiting and asking Magnus what is the way in which you are going to make progress. Because if you take here, I'm taking back with the pawn. Magnus says I'm pushing the pawn to h6 so that in future if I can win your h7 pawn, this will be a huge, huge passer. Savchenko has calculated that the king and pawn endgame is a draw. So he offers a rook trade. But now Magnus quickly declines it, playing his rook to e3. Maybe he wants to go like this, this and this. Very, very interesting chess. By the way, just so that you know, the rook trade would not have helped because here, this is a draw. This is how he would have drawn. Now, rook c4 played. Magnus goes in. Rook comes back. Again, you can't trade it because that's a draw as we have seen. But Magnus can go in with his king perhaps. No, he goes rook g7 and he tells Savchenko, if you take, I'll take with the pawn and queen it. King comes in. White king moves in. Rook d7, Savchenko still making the best moves possible. King e6 and now you must give this check. Or rook c7, these two moves draw. Everything else is just plain lost. If you go rook d4, which is looking very tempting, it's also losing because I'll just take the pawn on h7. No, it's a blunder. Magnus quickly takes the pawn. He knows he's winning. Rook h8, what a brilliant move. And now, guys, you will notice that Magnus plays his pawn to h7, his threat is to give a check and make a queen, which is winning. For Boris Savchenko, this is all over. It turned around so quickly, king b7 so that there's no check, but now the king comes in, he wants to take this pawn and then move the rook and queen. Pawn up to f4, now there are many ways to win. One of them is king g7, the other is to take king g6. These are the two ways Magnus takes the pawn. Generally, taking this pawn is not a good idea because then there's no shelter for the king and the check start. But right now, the check is met with king h5 and there are no more checks. It's amazing how Magnus Carlsen has turned this around. Totally, Boris Sevchenko is not happy with what he has done. He really played well in this game. But against Magnus, even one mistake can prove fatal. He's the god of endgame. King h5 beautifully played there. And now the rook goes back. He's hoping that Magnus gives a check and goes into queen versus rook. But no such luck. Magnus goes rook f8. And a check means he then later goes king g6. And nets a full rook with the pawn queening. With this, Magnus Carlsen is completely winning. Savchenko shaking his head. Has his hand on his head. He knows that it's all over. Game over. Handshake. Magnus Carlsen has done it. From an equal position, he scores a brilliant win.